What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to another frame by frame spoiler cast or special. I'm your host, Aman, and I'm joined by my co host, the one with no nickname, Alice. And today we'll be talking about the latest Marvel presentation, the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. So, Alice, any general thoughts before we dive deeper into it? You're muted. You pull it was my line. turn to do it this time. It was my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Similar to uh, the first holiday special, the Halloween one. I thought it was, you know, very fun. It was, you know, a nice side adventure. It added a little bit more depth to the characters. We got to see some interactions, some things that, you know, some new layers to the character. But other than that, it wasn't anything that necessarily needs to be hung up on for, you know, the building of the universe. You could skip this if you wanted to, or you can honestly watch this one independent and just keep this with the Guardians movies, and it would still be really enjoyable. So I think it, uh, it was very good at that. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, I think it was the perfect... I mean, this is exactly what I expected it to be, and I got exactly what I wanted from a holiday special. Uh, and yeah, it got me in the holiday feels. Um, the, the humor was great, uh, not Illumawati stuff, the actual good humor. And uh, I love the combo of Z um, Drax and uh, Mantis there. The chemistry those two characters have is amazing. Um, and yeah, I, it got me in the feels near the end. So yeah, I loved it. Uh, I, yeah. I did see one person point out that this is the first time we've seen the Guardians written by James Gunn since Volume Two. So we've seen the Guardians, but you know, it's either yeah. mm -hmm. brothers or um, when, did, when did Guardians or, come out? It was like two thousand eighteen? Seventeen, I think. Yeah. Seventeen. No, so yeah, so it's been a hot. Yeah, it's, it's been a hot minute since we've actually seen the Guardians as written by James Gunn. And how it kind of felt very natural, you know. There's a noticeable difference. And not even that the Russo brothers did anything bad with them, because I enjoyed how they fit into uh, Infinity War. Like, I even I enjoyed they were one of the better parts of um, Love and Thunder. But I did feel that it was noticeable how it felt that, you know, kind of sliding back into James Gunn in that role, writing mm -hmm. for these characters. Yeah, I natural primer just, to prime us up for volume three. He, he just perfectly under, understands these characters and how to write them. And uh, yeah, there's sort. This was sort of his um first major superhero project, Guardians of the Galaxy. And uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be emotional for him to let go of the franchise after volume three. So uh, that's gonna be interesting to see. But yeah, overall, I think James Gunn really knows how to. I uh, really understands the Guardians uh, at, at at their core. Uh, and yeah, I thought he, I thought it was written fantastic fantastically. Uh, but um, let's dive. Let's dive into the characters. Um, wh what was who was your standout character in the special? Um, I'm going to have to say Mantis. I thought I really liked what they did with Mantis. One of my laments, as good as as much as I like James Gunn and what he's done with the Guardians and the Marvel Cinematic Universe, some of the character choices they are definitely departures. Mantis is probably, I'd say, the biggest departure overall from her comic book character. Just in terms of personality, origin, pretty much everything. She's very different. Not even in a bad way, but it has been interesting to see the fact that she's a very much of a fighter. She's very much of a, a, a presence in the Avengers and the Guardians of the Galaxy in the comics. So here, not exactly that much in the past in the other movies. This one, though, we got to see her personality center stage, and she was really enjoying, engaging. I really like what Palm does with the character. Her banter with Dave Batista was really good. You know, the little stuff we got seeing, you know, I think one thing about this was we kind of got more hints at what we could see in Guardians 3. So seeing the her kind of her interactions with the team now that she's more cemented as a member, also seeing her being able to use her powers more effectively in battle than just holding Thanos or touching her hands to the ground, actually doing stuff in combat. That was nice mm -hmm. to see. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm gonna agree with you there. Mantis was my favorite character as well. Uh, it's just that the chemistry between with her and Drax, Dave Bautista's Drax, was just um, pretty much uh, flawless, I would say. And her, the way she um, went about, uh, try she knew P Peter Quill might be her brother, uh, and how she wanted to, him to feel at home and uh, have bring that Christmas feel back, and then right, going to arrest Kevin Bacon. That was just all heartwarming. And then near the end, that scene where uh, she reveals to Peter. 
that uh, she is his uh, sister. And uh, yeah, that was really heartwarming. So yeah, uh, I think I, I really like what the actor did with the character and uh, can't wait to see more of her. Exactly. Uh, any other character you want to talk about? I mean, honestly, everyone was funny. I mean, we could talk about Kevin Bacon. <laughs> Kevin, I thought Kevin. he was, you know, he was a good I remember it was like reported. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was sorry, reported what? a few months ago that Kevin Bacon is in talks to play a Marvel character, and everyone was like, oh my god, he's going to be Norman Osborn, he's going to be Magneto, but uh, he's Kevin Bacon. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, that was uh, <laughs> that was funny, but uh, uh, but yeah, uh, Mantis was probably my standout character. Let's talk about some of the Easter eggs, because there are a lot of Easter eggs in this. Um, did you catch Kingo's poster from Eternal? Yes, I did, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there was that. There's also uh, that funny bit where she sees someone dressed as Captain America and she's like, Steve. Uh, but yeah, that was... The more really obscure nice. one, honestly. The most obscure one. And I had to look at this one because I knew it off the back of my head when they mentioned the part about GoBot. So I was like, what on mm-hmm. earth is a GoBot? So yeah, so basically, so you know they're Transformers. Go-Bot? GoBots are like another um, franchise similar to uh, Transformers GoBots. I think it's more exclusive to Japan. For like a brief time during like the 70s and 80s, Marvel owned the license to publish comics for them. It's been like a long defunct toy line. So this is like, this is one of, uh, in the the classic James Gunn deep cuts, once again, that was the deep cut of the deep cut. Which also, though, technically means that if they're canon to the MCU, Transformers could be canon to the MCU thanks to James Gunn. Also the Bruce Wayne line. The Bruce oh, Wayne line, I, I like I, that. I, I, that, I, I, that. That I, I, was funny. No, that, that was funny as well. Um, but yeah, Transformers could show up in Secret Wars, everybody. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you heard it here first. Uh, I'm yeah, brain by this... brain. <laughs> Optimus Prime um, confirmed for the Avengers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is classic James Gunn. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know what else to say about this special. because The one you know, thing that... I will say, I will say one thing, and maybe this is my bias is showing. And I apologize. Maybe I'm still feeling the sting of it's a him, a Mario. I felt like this <laughs> Pratt kind of phoned it in this time. I didn't. To me, one of the highlights has been honestly sort of the enthusiasm that he brings. And granted, he didn't really have as much doing this. He wasn't. This is the one Guardians thing where he wasn't the star. But compared to everyone else, it it just kind of felt like Chris Pratt going, "Wow, yeah." Cool, but that is it. Isn't that because he's trying to play a more um, down and beat beat up Peter Quill because of Gamora's gone now and all that? Oh no, no, no! I don't think it was a down and beat up. It just it felt less like it's hard to describe. That when watching it, there it was it's something in the scene. Maybe it was the scene most of all when it was they were playing the little Christmas song with the old ninety seven mm-hmm. or whatever. It didn't really seem like he was having almost a reaction of someone who's bewildered. It almost felt like he was playing a role. It felt like Chris Pratt playing Star-Lord, or even Chris Pratt playing Andy Dwyer, not quite as much. Some of the same level that he's done. And granted, this wasn't, you know, the actual movie. From the way I understand it, they kind of filmed this on the side. Like, while they're filming Guardians 3, yeah, uh, they filmed this yep. on mm-hmm. the side of it. So I'm not say i'm sure this has nothing to do with the actual content of the movie but one thing maybe even then in a similar way how it would have been cool to get maybe a little bit more man thing or a little bit more of elsa and jack in the werewolf by night special might have been mm-hmm. cool to just see maybe like one or two scenes of maybe uh, nebula. uh peter and nebula interacting while mm-hmm. they're gone or something like yeah that. you know and again that's not yeah it was still very good special not gonna complain about anything but just one element i think while we did get to see a lot more of the, the two characters who we haven't really gotten folks on much of drax and mm-hmm. mantis, drax and mantis. Mm-hmm. the other characters i felt didn't get quite as much to do here. yeah rocket and groot weren't in it for that long as well but yeah, yeah this this very much felt like a mantis and drax special they're, yeah. on, the, they're on the poster as well and almost um, you know what it almost to... felt like to me and this is not a knock at all Remember how on like back when D- DVDs were more popular, you know, you'd have sometimes like, like I remember on like the Kung Fu Panda DVD, they had like a Legend of the Furious Five, like, uh, like like short special or something, or like on the Pixar yeah, ones, yeah, they I would always that. have like short. It's, it's, this feels like, like, like backstory, yeah, the, yeah. It feels yeah. like the Disney version of that, like a, an MCU version of that. 
Or even like remember back when they had the uh, the one shots, like with Colson. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Songs, songs uh, like uh, that. Di- the Trevor Slattery. Yeah, a nice little a nice little fun side adventure. Yeah. They also have those for like Disney movies nowadays. Like before a new Disney movie comes out, there's like a short 15 minute uh mini Oh yeah. Sort of thing with, okay, like, this is totally off and all that. If this is one mm-hmm. thing that I was thinking about. Channing Tatum would honestly do pretty good, I think, in the Guardians franchise. I feel like when we were talking about him, it reminded me of on our previous podcast. I feel like his mm-hmm. style of humor and stuff, if they go forward, I'm assuming they're not abandoned. Richard Ryder, maybe? I can see a Richard Ryder. Yeah. Richard Ryder, there's a lot of, I mean, if they try to keep it more obscure, they could go with, like, um, what's that dude's name? Vance Astro. He's, like, the leader of the Guardians of the future, of the future team of Guardians. I know he usually uses mm-hmm. Captain America's shield. I could see him possibly okay. fitting into that. Even someone like, uh, uh, what's it called? I'm just, I'm just I can honestly see Guardian him character. depending on what they're Comic. doing. Because do we do we know if that one dude Cosmic in Secret Rider. Invasion? Cosmic Ghost Rider. Uh, no, because that wouldn't make sense for uh, who Cosmic Ghost Rider is. Uh, Agent Venom? Uh, so MC Eddie Brock? Uh, maybe. Hmm? MC Eddie Brock? MC yeah. Eddie Brock, maybe. Cosmic Ghost Rider would have to be John Bernthal, though. John Bernthal. Yeah. Why? I don't. You're know. familiar don't with know. the Cosmic Ghost Rider, no, yeah? I don't know. I don't. I don't the Cosmic don't Ghost Rider is a as a basically a corrupted alternate universe version of the Punisher, who oh, goes crazy okay. and gets cosmic power. So he gets. He basically oh. is. So he gets the power. He gets. So he because gets the spirit of vengeance on mm-hmm. Earth. He becomes the spirit of vengeance, and after that, Galactus makes him his herald, gives him a cosmic upgrade to his Ghost Rider powers, and that basically fries his brain also, and he becomes the Deadpool space. Oh, damn. I did not know that. But yeah, you learn something new every day. Um, so yeah, for all you listening, that's some uh, quick cosmic Ghost Rider. You know, you don't need to watch the variant cosmic comics. Cosmic Ghost Rider lore. Listen to frame by frame. Do we know uh, if... Uh, if that dude from Secret Invasion is Secret Secret Scroll, Super Scroll, or is he just some mm-hmm. other high ranking scroll? Or is he actually Super Scroll? I have no idea. Uh, you mean Talos, right? No, no, no. The other guy, Ben. He appears in the trailer. That one scene where Talos is grabbing him by the scruff of the neck. He's supposed to be like some high ranking. Hold on, let me look it up. Oh, I don't think they confirmed any any of that. Secret Invasion. Let's see. He is playing a character called Gravik. Hmm, I don't yeah, think that's... Nice. Does Super Scroll actually have a name? Uh, no idea. All I know, he has the powers of the Fantastic Four, doesn't he? Like, he has that. We will have to look it up. The only reason I mention is because in currently in the latest iteration of the Guardians, Super Scroll mm-hmm. was a member of the team. Oh. As well. So. Just uh, thinking Super about... Scroll the... the one with the... Guardian's power? The he's a fantastic power, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. He's the, oh, so yeah, has yeah, all the fantastic powers of fantastic power, power. Yeah. Usually the main yeah. scroll when people think of scrolls. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I I I knew that. I, I saw him in a video game. There was this Avengers Academy video game I used to play. And uh, <sighs> Super Scroll was the main villain in it. So yeah, that's that's where I know him from. Uh but yeah, Jimmy, uh overall, any closing thoughts and uh, what would you rate this special out of ten? Honestly, here's the thing. I'm not necessarily going to rate it super high because when I watch it, I could reasonably don't necessarily see myself this being a part of my holiday classics. It was good, but it wasn't outstanding. But at the same time, it scratched the exact edge. So I'm going to say probably a seven, seven and a half. Not that that's any uh, knock on the quality, but it, yeah, it's just I, good. I think I would go for a six because it was above average. I wouldn't say it was great. But uh, it had the it had the holiday vibe to it. Uh, it got it, it gave me the holiday season feels. It had a bit of emotion in it, and yeah, that's all you could ask from a forty minute special. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a six out of ten. Uh, but yeah, Jimmy, uh, that the I mean, uh, that's all we have for you guys today. Thank you all for watching or listening. Uh, where can we find you, Alice? 
Uh, you can find me at Jemmy underscore 421 on Instagram. And you can find me at Amon underscore M05 on Twitter. Thank you all for watching. Uh, and make sure to subscribe to our channel for more spoiler cast. We might have another one coming soon. Glass Onion just dropped. Uh, is that out yet, Glass Onion? Uh, I know it's out in theaters. I don't necessarily know if it's out in... Um, I think it saw it a little bit still on Netflix. But there are some pretty big things. We've got Glass Onion. We've got The Fablemans. Got a lot of big... Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Little Way of uh, Water. Avatar. We got, we got uh, the new Avatar. I have a feeling that's gonna flop, but uh, but yeah, stay tuned for more special. Actually, uh, there's projections that saying it's gonna pass the opening weekend of the first one, so I don't yeah. know about that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Uh, but uh, okay. yeah, guys, thank you all for watching. Make sure to leave a five star review on uh, your favorite podcast listening service. Um, also make sure to join our Patreon at patreoncom save the game media uh, to get a shout out uh, at the start of our podcast episodes. And yeah, guys, uh, we'll see you again very soon. Peace.